Hello, 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 and happy evening. My name is Lakeisha Sarba, and I am going live here for our experience tonight. As you come live, please pop in, let me know your name and where you're watching from. And we are going to get started. Tonight, we're going to be discussing the purpose of your 2020 planner. Um, now, I know that quite a few of you probably already created planners or you've created planners before, and that's great. If you have, please put in the chat that you've already created a planner. I'd love to know those of you that are already experienced in this area. And um, for those of you that are new to creating planners, if you could let me know in the chat that you are a new planner creator, I'd also like to know who our newbies are. All right, let me make sure that you can hear me okay. You could let me know in the chat that you are. Ah, you can hear me, awesome, okay. All right, and let me do one more thing here. Awesome. So I went ahead and made that an announcement. All right, so we are going to get going with this. So welcome to the My Project Planner 2020 pop-up experience. My name is Lakeisha Sarba, and I'll be your host throughout this entire experience. So we are going to run this about to the um, probably like the last week in September where I'm gonna be providing you with all the different tips and suggestions and advice on creating your own planner so that that can help you and put you in the right direction um, in creating your own planner. So I'm really super excited about that. And um, as you join me, let me know that you're here. I see several people popped up. Let me go ahead and say some hellos to some people. Hi, Catherine. Thanks for being here. Hi, Shanda. Hi, Natalie. Welcome. Hello, Shayla. Shayla, how are you? Hi, Angela. Thanks for being here. Hi, Leanna. <laughs> Very nice to see you. All right, ladies. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to get this party started. So for those of you that are experienced and you've already created a planner before, put one in the chat if you've already created a planner. If you are new to creating your own planner, put two in the chat if you are new to creating your own planner. And if you are completely new to planning, period, and this is kind of your first experience with planning at all, owning your own planner or creating a planner, put three in the chat, all right? So if you've already created your own planner before, put one. If you are new to creating your for planner, you may not be new to planning, but you're new to creating a planner for yourself, put two. And if you are new to planning and creating a planner, put three in the chat. I'd like to know um, who you are. All right, so what we're gonna talk about tonight is um, giving your planner a purpose. And the reason that you want to give your planner, your planner a purpose is because you want to be able to attract the people that need the actual planner. Now, I know that there are um, several ways if you're looking to just go with the general public and you, you know, maybe thinking that you want everyone to buy your planner, so you want to keep it super general. I really want to steer you away from that direction because what happens is if you're just going to create a generalized planner that anyone can use, then they can get that anywhere. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's important to make sure that you make yourself stand out online and make yourself stand out from the planner crowd because the planner crowd is very, very large, okay? The planner industry is growing every day. I put some statistics in the other group that the planner industry is actually booming. I forget exactly how much I said. I can look that up in a little bit, but it is um, definitely the time for creating a planner if that's something that you've always wanted to do. Now, for me, I've always wanted to create, sorry, that's my mother. I've always wanted to create my own planner. Mom, I'm live. I have to call you back. 
<laughs> okay. I've always wanted to um, create a planner for myself. Like I've always created my own planners or my own planner inserts, but I have never went and created a planner for other people to buy. And so I'm really excited that I'm going to be doing that for 2020. And so I thought since I'm doing it for myself, I may as well help other people that want to do the same exact thing. Now back to the reason why I want to steer you away from creating just a general planner is because again, you'll get lost in the sea of everybody else, of every other planner. You wanna create a planner with purpose. You want your planner to really stand out and you want the people that need your planner to notice it, okay? So in order for the people that you want to, um, to have your planner or the people that you're creating your planner for, you want those people to be able to notice your planner out of all the other planners that are going to be out there, okay? So when I'm speaking of creating a planner with purpose, I mean giving your planner an actual, an actual purpose, like giving your planner an actual purpose, giving your planner a definition, giving your planner a job, like a description. What exactly is your planner going to do to help a, um, a, you know, a crew of people or your tribe or whoever you're creating it for, what is your planner going to do that another planner wouldn't pretty much. Okay. Um, so you got to be pretty honest with yourself at this time because there are a lot of planners out there. So what exactly are you going to do in your planner to make your planner stand out from the next planner that's out there? And that's why it's important for you to give your planner a purpose. Okay. If you are all with me, can you please type in the chat? I'm going to give my planner a purpose. Please type in the chat, I'm going to give my planner a purpose. Hey, Barbara, thank you so much for joining. Hi, Misty Starks, thanks for joining. What's up, Wendy? Hi, Deborah Scott, thanks for being here. Um, good evening to you all. And um, I want you to go ahead and type in the chat, I'm going to give my planner a purpose so we can move forward. If you want me to move forward, I want you to type in the chat, I'm going to give my planner a purpose because I want to make sure that you understand what I'm saying in regards to giving your planner a purpose. You have to give your planner a meaning, a reason for being, right? Why are people going to choose your planner outside of everybody else's planner? So it's important for you to understand have to give your planner a purpose you have to give your planner meaning okay you have to give your planner life so we're going to speak that right now okay um Leanna says, I'm going to give my planner a purpose. Angela says, I'm going to give my planner a purpose. LaShayla says, I'm going to give my planner a purpose. Natalie, I'm going to give my planner a purpose. And some hands in the air, yes. Wendy, I'm going to give my planner a purpose. Deborah Scott, I'm going to give my planner a purpose. Um, Kath, um, Catherine, I'm going to give my planner a purpose. Horsewoman, yes, definitely. Okay, so now that we are all on the same page about giving our planner a purpose, let's move forward with exactly how you do that. So the very first step is the who. Who exactly are you creating this planner for? Are you a health coach? Are you a wedding planner? Are you a um, horse breeder? Or do you teach people about horses like Catherine? Like what exactly are you gonna be doing um, who are you going to be helping with your planner? So if you have an idea of who your planner is for, go ahead and put in the chat who your planner is for. Who is the who, right? Who are you creating this planner for? I'd love to know. Um, if you are an event planner or a wedding planner and you're creating it for brides or events, then put that. If you are a coach and you are creating it for um, business, women in business that are just starting up, then put that. If you are creating it, if you're a health coach and you're creating it for your clients that need to lose weight, then put that. If you are um, creating your planner for um, the purpose of helping people to um, manage their finances, this is like some type of financial planner or a savings planner or a, you know an investment planner, Put that, like who exactly are you creating your planner for? Who is the who? Okay, so LaShayla says brides. Okay, awesome. Um, all right, so LaShayla clearly knows exactly who her planner is for. It's really important that you get specific to know who your planner is for, okay? If you don't know who you're creating your planner for, then that could be a little problem, all right? Now, the way that you can work that out is if you are not a coach or if you're not like an event planner like LaShayla 
or if you are not a consultant like me, right? Maybe you're just someone and you have passion for helping people manage their time. And so you just came up with the brilliant idea that you want to create a planner to help them to maybe organize their life better. Okay, and that's fine. You still want to define who that planner is for. Is it for kids that are in school? You want to help them to plan out, you know, their days better or their activities. Is it for stay at home moms? You know, you want to plan out their days better um, for stay at home moms. Is it for teachers? You know, I mean, so you want to make sure that you have at least a general idea as to who your planner is for. Okay. And again, the reason why you want to be specific or you want to be clear on who your planner is for, because when it comes time for you to market your planner and put it out there in front of people, you want to attract that specific crowd of people. Now, the reason that you want to do this is because you just don't want to go blindly just creating a planner to create a planner and just say, hey, I made this planner buy it. People are going to want to know what is the purpose of your planner? Like, what is it going to help me do? What type of goal am I going to accomplish, right? How is it going to help me in the long run? So that's why you want to make sure that you create a planner with a purpose and that it's geared specifically toward a group of people, not the masses, not everyone, just a group of people, because it's easier to sell that way when you niche your planner down to a specific group of people or a specific industry or a specific um, like unit of some kind, like, you know, like, um, what am I trying to say? Industry, I'm sorry. So, you know, niche it down. Again, the event industry um, is really big with planners. What else is there? The coaching industry, the consulting industry, the health industry, the financial industry, teaching, right? Students, parents, like, you know, moms that stay home. Those are different industries and different things that you can market your your planners to, but the only way for you to know exactly not only how to market it or who you're going to market it to when it's time for that, but also to know who you're creating it for because the purpose behind creating the planner is to help them to solve a problem, right? So once you know have the who and you know who you're creating it for, you know what problems they're having, you want to know how you're going to be able to solve it, help them to organize themselves better. And then that, you know, is going to be the whole purpose behind your planner. All right. So Catherine says horse women 40 plus to plan their journey um, with and for them and their horses. Love that. Natalie says a new entrepreneur startup and side hustles. I love that. Hi, Diane. Thank you so much for joining us. So Leanna says um, I'm going to make a new version of one. Um, one will be for entrepreneurs and moms, and one will be for brides and still deciding on the next one. Okay, not a problem. So you have a couple of different planners that you're going to be creating. Not a problem at all. Leanna, do you have like a planner business where that's what you do is you sell planners? Because if you are somebody that's in that specific industry, it's great that you want to create planners for different niches or different industries because then that way you can actually put those planners you can market them to that to like different groups of people. So that's very smart if that is your type, if that's your business model. What's up, Monica? Thank you so much for joining. Hey, Tracy. So Deborah Scott says, um, those women wanting to be healthy. Okay, not a problem. So you want to create a planner for women that are that's wanting to be healthy, that wants to start that that healthy journey. Okay, I get that. Hey, Kimberly, thanks for joining. Um, yes, coaching and consulting, said Natalie. All right. So Wendy um, Harvey Robinson says, um, my planner will be for busy women, moms, entrepreneurs, and corporate queens who want to take control of their personal development on a day-to-day -day basis um, based on life application of their spiritual journey. Very nice. So she's you're going to, scripture is um, wonderful, but we don't always take action on that on our day-to-day -day lives got it so Wendy you're creating like a spiritual type journal um, or I'm sorry planner that may have like scripture and things like that involved in it and that's awesome because like you said that will help people to kind of take action along their spiritual journey it's beautiful I love that thank you so much for sharing um, ladies who you're creating your planner for it's really a good idea to kind of get that in your head and not only that but say it out loud that's why I'm asking you for your feedback and to type into the comments here so that you can literally hear yourself say the very thing that you want to create. Okay. 
All right, awesome. So once we have the purpose for our planner and we know exactly who our planner is for, the next thing that we want to do is um, understand how is our planner going to help them? So what exactly is our planner going to do to help them um, in the long run, okay? Now your planner, we're not really gonna talk tonight about the um, like the whole mechanics of the planner, right? Because we have our six month planner, nine month planner, three month planner, and then a year planner. We're not really gonna go into all of that right now. But I want you to really think about how your planner is going to help the people that you said that your planner is going to help, right? So when you think about that, how is it going to help them? What type of struggles do they have currently right now? What type of problems are they having at this particular time? Or what do you think, like, what do you think your planner is going to do to be able to help them so that they can then move forward? How is your planner going to help them to do that, okay? So let's talk a little bit about the bridal industry, okay? LaShayla is creating a planner for brides. What can a bridal planner do to help a bride? Well, it can help her to plan out her wedding. Typically, people start planning weddings anywhere from a year to two years, typically, right? You start planning your wedding. A year, 12-month long planner is something that would really be able to help a bride. Also, a six-month planner, the six months leading up to the wedding, would also be something perfect to be able to help a bride. What will a bride need in that planner? What is like, what is she struggling with? We know that she's stressed out, right? Having to plan a wedding. She probably needs to really make sure that she has her vendors together. So maybe a list of her of area so that she can put her vendors list in there. She'll also need to see like a month today. So she'll probably want to look at the entire month that she's going through to see like when maybe different deposits or payments and things like that are due, when she has fittings for different things, when she needs to meet with bridesmaids, right? A month at a glance would be something perfect for that. She may also want to have an area to take lots of notes. So you you may want to have a lot of note pages available to her. She may also want to track weight loss, right? Typically, brides are wanting to lose weight right before the wedding so that they can fit inside of that beautiful dress, some of them anyway. So maybe you may want to even put that in there, LaShayla, if they're kind of trying to manage that whole thing. And not only that, but I find that even when you're stressed out, managing, you know, the way you eat and, you know, working out and things like that really helps to manage that whole thing, right? So that may even help. Um, you may even have another section for budget, for being able to budget all the different expenses that they have in their wedding so they can make sure that they're on track of everything. Do you ladies see where I'm going with this, right? So those are all the different sections or components to a planner that a bride may actually use. I'm sure there are several more. I'm not the bride or wedding professional LaShayla is. So I'm sure that there are several more things that LaShayla would actually add into that planner to help a bride so that she doesn't lose her mind, right? So it's something that's gonna help to keep her super organized so that you know when the day comes, she may be even able to hand this planner over to her event planner or to her bridesmaid or something like that or her mom or sister so that they can say, okay, I know what needs to happen you know, during this time or even after the wedding, right? Once she's gone on her honeymoon, there may be still some things that need to happen between some vendors like the photographer and some other things, the florist, you know, getting the, the um the wedding gown you know where it needs to go to make sure that it's cleaned and storaged all that other stuff right so there may be even some things that she may need to hand off to other people while she's on her honeymoon so you get where i'm going with this so you want to think about all the different things that someone would actually need in order you know um to create your actual planner all right so i'm going to give you a couple of other examples so someone said that they are in the health industry Okay, so with someone that is getting healthy, like myself, I'm currently going through a healthier lifestyle. And with that, if I were to purchase a planner, I would definitely want something to help me track my meals. I would definitely want something to help me track my water. I would definitely want to be able to track like my steps to be able to see like how many like to track. I would like to be able to see that on a monthly spread, how many steps, you know, that I actually took 
over that month period and also during the week. I would also like to be able to take notes and journal my experience. Was today a really good day? And why I'm feeling a little off or why my energy is not there. I'd be able to flip back a couple of pages to see what I've eaten this week, right? Maybe, you know, the dairy or something had me a little thrown off. So I know next week not to incorporate dairy so that I could feel a little better. You get where I'm going there? So you want to make sure that you're providing all the necessary components and things like that inside of your planner so that it's going to help you somebody that's on a fitness journey meet their you know end goal or whatever their results are um, another thing that you may want to consider also with that whole fitness planner piece is to um, add information inside of the planner i find that planners are pretty just like you know you have to go in and you have to fill out the information but what i would love to see in like a health or weight loss or fitness planner or healthy lifestyle planner is like healthy recipes or a list of different things to substitute. So like, instead of using butter, use this for healthier, you know, something, something, or for a healthier snack, you know, use this, or quick recipes or things like that that I can fix, you know, in under 15 minutes or something like that, or different things that I can substitute. You know, if you're not wanting to eat chicken today, then maybe try this or maybe try that, you know, different substitutions. So I'd love to be able to see like a list of things like that, a list of like um, really low carb or um, low fat desserts, things like that, that I can create myself, you know? So those are different things that you may want to even think about, not only for like a health or fitness planner, but even when you're creating your planner, like what are some things that you can make a list of or, you know, so that people can actually go to that, like as a cheat sheet and different things like that. Okay. I think that a lot of times when people are creating planners, they really miss the mark in that area and not providing like that little information that I think is really key to not only um, helping somebody to like really meet their goal, but just kind of add like a little personal touch to it. Something a little different that other people aren't really doing. Right. Okay. So, um, we spoke about, um, the purpose of our planner. We talked about who our planner is for, and we talked about what that, like how that planner is going to help that person. Like, so that's the actual how, like how the planner is actually going to help them to meet their goals. Um, hey, Stacy, thank you so much for joining. Um, Kimberly says, I want to create a planner for realtors who are my clients for my gifting company. That's perfect. I like that. Okay. Great job. I, I think that's a great idea. All right. So Leanna says, um, I have a couple of separate platforms that I will use. Uh, okay, so she's talking about her planner business and a couple of businesses. So I will mark um, the planners individually. Okay, got it. A budget tracker. Yes, I totally get that, LaShayla. Um, I have a bridal gown website that I'm still launching. Oh, you do a lot of different things, Leanna, too. She, you also have a bridal gown website. Okay, good for you. All right, so LaShayla says... Um, I'd want space to write, okay, to write out weekly grocery lists and a fitness health planner. Yeah, definitely. I definitely want that too. And to track my exercise, to write out my workouts down, Monday, 6.30 Zoom. Yeah, totally. All right. And so um, Shanda says, really good idea. Deborah Scott says, thanks for sharing. You're very, very welcome. Okay. But do you ladies see where I'm going with this? Like, it's super important to make sure that you have, like, you have to really literally be in the mindset you know, of the person that's going to be buying your planner. Okay. And one thing that I would encourage you to do is look up planners or this weekend, go out to, you know, to different stores that sell planners and take a look at some planners in the actual niche or industry that you're wanting to create planners in. Look to see the style of those planners. Look to see like what people have in them. You know, do they have those recipe cards that you can tear out and take to the grocery store with you that I find so handy? And let me tell you, I could not find that in any of the little posh planners out there. However, I was gifted this planner. It's a parent planner from my son's, um, from the women at my son's school. And let me tell you, I can tear out recipe card, like my list thing here let me show you so this is the actual page here it's a page but you can actually tear out that sorry this is glaring there you see that i can actually tear out 
This is like my meals on one side, and then this is like the um, my shopping list on the other side. You see that? So it's really functional. I can tear it out, and then I can take it with me to the grocery store. I have my meals on one side from Monday through Sunday, and then I can write my grocery list on the other. So it works really perfect. So I'm talking about little things like that is what, you know what I'm saying, like makes it all worth it for me um, to say, hey, you know what, that was a good look. They had all the different little things I need in there. I'm going to go back to them for next year, right? So think about little things like that and how you can actually really be able to help the people that you're actually creating the planner for, okay? All right. And so um, do you guys have any questions about anything that I've just discussed so far? Any questions at all? Feel free, let's go ahead and get those questions out of the way. I wanna be able to answer them for you, okay? Um, what we're gonna be discussing tomorrow, get my list here, is naming your planner, because I think that is a very important step as well, because you wanna actually make sure that you're speaking to your target audience. So we'll think, we'll talk about or speak about some different ways that you can go about naming your planner. And that's gonna be very important. We'll be back here in the group tomorrow at the same time. And I'll be discussing the whole naming aspect with you and giving you some ideas on how you can name your planner so that you can attract your ideal clients or distract the people that you want, I'm sorry, to buy the actual planner from you. Hi, Ro, thanks for joining. Diane says, um, I like a planner where you can write down your professional and personal goals each month. I like that idea too. I like to be able to write down my personal goals too. As a matter of fact, for those of you that don't know me, if you're new to me, I am a planner person. Like I'm truly, truly, truly a planner. It's like one of my little hobby passions. And so right now what I'm using professionally is called the 90 day. Can you see that? I'm sorry, this light is so, so crazy. So it's called the 90 day goal planner. And um, it's called the 90 day X goal planner. I'm sorry. And I was gifted like a whole year, I think it's worth of these planners from my for my coach and what I do here is I plan out 90 days worth of everything that I'm doing in my business so everything goes right here in this little planner I also love it because it's small it fits inside of my purse or my laptop bag or I can easily just tuck it under my arm if I have to run out and I need to take it with me so I love that it's super small um, it's probably one of the smallest planners that I've ever ever worked in um, I also I think I just showed you this planner that I use for my son. This is just like a blue sky planner. I think they got these from like Target or something like that. And it's a parent planner. So that helps me to keep track of my son's academic stuff and also activities, um, you know, swimming, piano, chess, <laughs> all the thing, all the activities and things like that that he has going on. Um, but then for my creative side, because I do have a creative side, I also have a happy planner. And so inside of my happy planner is where I do a lot of like my social media stuff, um, planning out different things like this, planning out different launches and stuff like that that I do. Then I use a bigger planner because it helps me to be able to really write in those spaces and then I can lay it flat on my desk and then I can work from it, read from it, you know, write, take notes and stuff like that. So I am working in three different planners, I am, but it works well for me because I keep all my, again, my marketing stuff, social media marketing stuff is in here. And then my cooking, planning, bills, household stuff, household chores. Um, we just signed up with this new service, it's super amazing. Um, it's called, it's like a butler service here where we live for apartment living. It's called Hello Alfred. It's like the best thing ever. And so I get to write in when somebody comes to tidy up to do like my floors and dusting. Oh my God, so perfect. Grocery shopping pickup, they do that. And, um, and some other things, right? Like honeydew things, you know, that my husband has taken so long to get to, I can have them do it. And so these are things that I keep here, like in my um, in my planner here. And then of course, this 90 day planner is for, specifically just for like my business plans for like over 90 days. This doesn't really have a lot of space to like, for me to be able to like do my social media and my launch planning and stuff like that. And so that's why 
I only use this just for like 90 day planning, like, you know, just to go in there and make sure that I'm following, I'm on tracking my goals. So this is just really for specifically for goals. And then my big happy planner is like for taking action and stuff. So yeah, three different planners, but um, it works. It works. It works for me. I know a lot of people say, use one planner, use one planner. And I don't want to use one planner. I want to use three. <laughs> so Wendy says, um, can you recap real quick the three points you covered? Of course, I'll recap those. 90 day planners are awesome. Catherine, I love it. I love it so much. I am, um, this is my, I'm ending my third one, right? September, October, November. So, yeah. So this is my quarter, this is my third quarter, and then I go into my fourth quarter one, but yeah, it is super awesome. Um, let's see. I didn't know the 90 day planners existed. Wow, yes, 90 day planners exist and they're perfect, especially for planning goals and for weight loss and um, a lot of different things, girl. 90 day planners are just amazing. All right, so there are two or three that are really good. Yeah, a happy planner. Yes, Stacy, happy planner. I use three as well. Good, Stacy. So I don't feel like the odd woman out. Stacy also uses three planners. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a, re a quick recap and we're going to go ahead. We're going to jump off for the night. And so we want to make sure that we are planning with a purpose. So you want to make sure that you are giving your planner a purpose. You're wanting, you want to give your planner a meaning. Um, so think specifically about... Um, who your planner is for, number one, right? So who you're creating your planner for, get inside of the mindset and the body of that person. What is it that they're going to need inside of that planner, you know? And what is it that they're struggling with that you can help them with? Also, we talked about the how. How is your planner actually gonna help that person or that group of people um, so that they can achieve their goals or whatever they're looking to achieve by using your planner, okay? Remember, your planner needs a purpose, number one. Give your planner a purpose. The way to give your planner a purpose, number two, is to find to figure out who your planner is for. What group of people are you gonna be seg like selling your planner to? Who are those people? Who are you creating it for? Again, that goes back to the purpose. Who are you creating your planner for? And then how are they gonna use your planner, right? So what is the best way for them to be able to use it? What are you gonna be putting in your planner to help them so that they can then execute their goals, right? So how is your planner going to help them? And I don't mean you have to physically create the planner and all that, you can literally just jot this information down. You can write out the purpose of my planner, like what is your planner purpose? Give your planner a meaning, you know, give it, if you want to give it like a little tagline or, you know, put a little description as to like why or like um, description of like what the purpose of your planner is. You can write that down like a little paragraph. Then you also want to um, write down who your planner is for, like you typed in here, who is your planner for. Then you also want to talk about, write down um, how will your planner help these people, right? So what is it that they're struggling with and how is your planner going to help them? Once you know how your planner is going to help them, then you'll know exactly how to go inside of your planner so that you can create it so that it can help them, right? And then, of course, you have some homework to do. Go out this weekend, take a look at some other planners in the same niche that you're looking to create your planner in. See what they have inside, like different inserts or different things that are in there. Commonly, planners, we know that they have quotes of inspiration. I also like those. Yes, those are great. The top three things that you want to complete for the day. Yes, those are great as well. But where can you kind of like be outside of the box a little bit what can you bring into your planner that those planners do not have like what about those inserts that you can tear out and take to the grocery store i think those are really fabulous um or like more areas to take notes so that somebody can actually use their planner as their journal as they're going through that experience like wendy mentioned that she's going to have like a spiritual planner it would be amazing, Wendy, if you were able to have like a lot of notes in each section. Your planner may be a little chunkier, but I'm telling you, it really helps to be able to have a planner that you don't have to carry a notebook with. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're going through like a spiritual journey or you want to take women on that so that they can reflect after reading those scriptures and things, then think about considering adding a note section so that they can do that. All right, and so Deborah Scott says, is it possible to combine our busy lives in one planner? Um, it is, you can definitely do it. I know people that do it. Some people just um, 
work off work in one planner you know i mean it's really just depends on your planner style for me it's easier for me just to have three because I just like having three. I just like three planners. I just don't know. I could probably fit everything inside of my happy planner, but I don't want to. I like having each planner to have a purpose and it just works better for me that way. All right, so Kimberly says, I like multiple planners. I have always been a planner. Um, used to drive my family nuts when I was younger. That is so good. I love that you were planning when you were younger. I wasn't. I wish that I somebody would have introduced me to planning when I was younger. I think I would have liked that as a young girl. But no, I didn't know anything about planners or planning or anything like that when I was young. I was sitting around with my father in like the gambling area or casinos or you know, not really legitimate casinos, but you know, you know those ones, right? Um, like the little gambling halls where he would play CeeLo and Blackjack and, and stuff. So yeah, I didn't get, I wasn't, I didn't get a chance to do the whole planning thing, but I'm sure you enjoyed that, um, Kimberly. And you're welcome, Angela. Early start time besides 6 a.m. That's a really good one because you know what? A lot of standard planners have, pe have people starting at like 7 a.m. is what I've seen. Yeah, so you do have early risers, people that start their day at like 5 a.m. So totally, I would say go for it. Definitely. Um, Catherine says, horse planners are usually at the barn. Okay, so I'm going to have mine printed on waterproof paper. Good for you. I love that. I love that. I want, I can't wait to see your horse planner. That's going to be pretty amazing. All right, and so Wendy Harvey says, it's going to be a 90-day journal, all right? So it won't be too, too, too chunky. Okay, so it's going to be an actual journal and not a planner. Is that what you're doing? Perfect. That works really well then. <laughs> All right. I'm so, I'm excited too. I'm happy that you're excited to get to, to get started on this. I am happy as well. All right, ladies. So I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna keep the videos to 30 minutes or under um, for each of these sessions, and then I'll be back tomorrow again at this same time. And then we tomorrow we will be talking about. Um, how to name your planners, okay? So I think that's super important, um, not only to draw in your audience, but to actually when you're giving your planner meaning, I think the name is important, but also for marketing purposes as well. So we'll do our best to merge and marry those th two things together, all right? If you have any other questions after watching this video, please feel free to post them below and I'll be more than happy to answer them, all right? So ciao for now, you ladies have an amazing evening.